Early days in the sport, you you went overseas. Uh, I think in the in the 1960. Is that right? Um, in the early days, in the 1960s, there were virtually no enduros in Australia. Uh, there's a few trials, the reliability trials, I call. Uh, it's just not worth running one at that time, which they still run today. It's called the Trinam Trial. A little bit different in format today than what it was, but it's still being run. Now I went overseas to ride motocross, and uh, went with Roy East. And we had the uh, first six months riding mainly in France and uh, Germany, uh, England, of course. Uh, then we went to uh, California for six months in the desert, race, desert racing for six months. And uh, Roy broke his leg pretty severely and he had a year off and I went back to, we both went back to Europe actually. And I rode with an American guy, uh, Russ Becker, and we did um, mainly the same thing again. Uh, as far as Spain, most of the events up to uh, Sweden, that was great years, that was great years. How did you get involved with Enduro? Um, we well, came back to Australia in 1963 because my father was very ill. And I spent a year here and then went back to Europe to ride motocross, but I wasn't really all that interested anymore. I built a couple of bikes to ride, I built a Matisse and a, a thing called a Sprite, which was a Triumph engine and a, and a Sprite frame. And, but I wasn't really there, I didn't really feel I wanted to do it anymore. So I got working in England and uh, Drew and I got married in 1969 and we came uh, back to Australia in 1970. Uh, joined the Cessna Motorcycle Club and uh, uh, pretty much from there Cessna Club was involved with a thing called Hunter Motocross which was run by Ken Thornton from Belmont, Belmont Club and the conglomeration of Cessna Club, Belmont Club and Newcastle Motorcycle Club and uh, we ran uh, six, six or seven motocross races a year. The last one we ran was the Australian Championships at uh, Foster Park in uh, Moulding. That was the last motocross. We, said, that's, we can't do any better, that's, that's, the, that's the best we can do. You know? So then uh, we looked around for something to do and we, we decided to run Enduros. Just on club ran uh, probably about four Enduros a year for the next three or four years. And then uh, that's about the time the guy started going to the six days. Um, one about, one about. 76, 77? Yeah, well, 73, I think, was the first. 70, 73, I think, was the first uh, Australian riders. Actually, it wasn't really. The first Australian riders were there in 1927. But no one remembers who they were or what they were. No, that was 1927. It was the Australian riders, the six days. Uh, but the first real attempt of people like uh, uh, Robert Haskins and Dennis Locke and Colin Tregonig and John Burroughs and those guys that went <coughs> in 73, 74, 75. Then in 76, Ted got out of order, uh, order uh, organised uh, probably the first true Australian team. Because Australia then had become affiliated to FOM and we were allowed to have a trophy team. But previously they rode as English club riders. They couldn't have a trophy team. <coughs> and uh, they went to uh, Plaviska Vestrika in um, Czech Republic. Uh, very, very difficult event. They always run a very difficult event. And uh, I think we had something like 13 riders and 13 failed, 13, no, that's not true. 13 didn't fail, 13 didn't finish. They certainly didn't fail, they, they, they did very well. Um, but they didn't finish the event. The event was just too, too different. No one had ever ridden anything like that before. The, the hills were so steep and the mud was so deep and, and uh, they didn't know the rules, the regulations, and so it was just all too difficult. So the resulting was that no one finished. That was in, um, be saying, I think in October 77. 
<coughs> and I thought, well, <coughs> that's not right. Those riders are better than that. They can do better than that. So, no, sorry, 76 that was. So I said, we'll do better than that. We'd, what I need is experience. So we're running a four-day event here in Australia in 77, strictly to the six-day rule book to give them some experience. Not only for the riders, but for, for uh, support crew and team managers and stuff. Because no one knew the faintest idea what, how to run the event, what it was about. So, um, and that's how it really started. I, think I, I rang Ian Cameron in Maitland and uh, asked for a copy of his FOM International Six Day Code, which he with some reluctance gave to me. He thought he'd never get it back again, but he did. <laughs> Um, we put out uh, uh, entry forms. Strangely enough, that just rained and rained and rained, same as Chaco. <laughs> it just rained for, for a week. And uh, we finished up having to run the event day by day. In the morning, I'd go down to the showground about past four or five o'clock in the morning. We'd lay the map out. We'd have the, the um, uh, course markers there. <coughs> We'd go on the map say, okay, we've got this part here marked in yellow, that part's marked in green, that part's marked in, in red. We can use those three parts. We'll connect those up with some blue arrows, and that's today's course. That's what we did for four days. And then in 1980, we had uh, severe bushfires and fire restrictions in all forest. Couldn't use it. Couldn't use the, uh, uh, the forest at all. So we rang uh, uh, people in uh, Broken Hill. Silver City Motorcycle Silver City Motorcycle Club, yeah. yeah. And they came to the party. I said, we'll lay the course out. You guys come and run the event. And that's how we, that's how we did it. We think we took about 10 cars, we hired a motel, took about 10, 10 cars of officials, and they laid the course out and we ran the event. But you've got to take a hat off for every one of those people to run all those, I don't know, 30 odd, four days now. They all did a great job, great job. You must be very proud of being conceiving the four day and here we are 32 years later, it's, you know, 33 years later. Well, it's I, I was devastated when it looked like the event was some chance of unfolding last year. I thought, oh, no, not after all these years. <clears throat> but it, it didn't, and uh, the people that took it up on the stand ran a magnificent event, and uh, um, maybe they had a little bit more encouragement to run a good event. So, uh, but I understand it all worked out magnificently, so great. And you, you couldn't make it this year? No, I didn't make it, no. Next one.